Armando Hasudungan, Biology and Medicine videos. Please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group for the latest videos. Please visit Facebook, Armando Hasudungan. In this video, we will look at the pathophysiology of acne, pimples, zits, comodo, that sort of group. So, pimples are caused by a variety of factors, um, such as, or interplay of a variety of factors, such as hormones during puberty. Some say diet contributes, but we know that there are bacteria that live in our sebaceous glands and in our hair follicles that actually contribute to the pathogenesis or development of pimples. These bacteria that are associated with acne pimples are uh, this, these guys here, propionobacterium species, uh, which are gram-positive, but in particular it's the propionobacterium acnes. The name already suggests an association with acne. So we're looking at acne pathophysiology. So acne can be non-inflammatory or can become inflammatory lesions, depending on what stage uh, the acne is at, essentially. So in the initial phase, when a pimple is forming, it is uh, non-inflammatory, but when a pimple pops, it can create a small inflammatory reaction. Let's have a look at a normal skin first. So here is the epidermis, top layer, the dermis. Here is our sebaceous gland that contains sebum and produces sebum, which will lubricate our hair follicles here. As I mentioned, acne is, an in, is caused by an interplay of many factors. So what normally can happen in acne pathogenesis is that there can be hypertrophy of the sebaceous glands and overproduction of sebum. This is caused mainly by hormones, androgens in particular. And you might notice that typically more men have uh, pimples than female because men have these uh, more androgen levels, I guess. So androgens such as testosterone can cause hypertrophy and therefore overproduction of sebum. The next phase in acne pathogenesis is where there is hyperkeratinization of the epithelial cells in the epidermis, which will lead to the obstruction of the sebaceous follicle. So sebum will accumulate in this area, the sebaceous follicle, and this can lead to the formation of what's called a comodo. So here is our sebaceous follicle, which is the hair follicle and the sebaceous gland. The actual cause of hyperkeratinization of epithelial cells in the epidermis um, leading to the obstruction here is actually unknown, but um, it might be related to the androgens and uh, sebum overproduction. So comodo, what is a comodo? Well, the comodo is basically the pimple. The comodo contains the oily sebum and keratinized cells together with some bacteria and fatty acids that we will talk about soon. Now you might remember that there are two types of pimples, the whiteheads and the blackheads. Now I will now explain to you uh, the difference. Remember that we have oxygen outside here. Well, when the comodo is open, meaning some oxygen can come in, so it's not fully obstructed, so some oxygen can come in, the open comodo will form into a blackhead because the oxygen can react uh, with a substance within the sebum or within this area, um, the melanin, causing the blackening of the comodo. But if the comodo is closed, this will form a whitehead because there's no oxygen that can react. And the oily fatty uh, comodo is usually pale in color. Continuing on, because the comodo is forming, it will still keep growing because there's nowhere for it to really go, except within uh, the sebaceous follicle. There is still sebum being produced by the sebaceous gland, and so this rich environment of sebum and all this oily, fatty stuff, this, this environment is very comfortable, very nice 
for the commensal bacteria that live there, which are the propionobacteria um, acne. These guys love sebum. And so they will proliferate. So there is pl proliferation of uh, P. acnes in, this, in the presence of sebum. There is propionobacteria uh, acnes proliferation because they feed on triglycerides found in sebum. So you can imagine, because there's so much sebum being produced, there is so much triglycerides. Propionobacteria acnes contain enzymes called lipases that will catalyze triglycerides into fatty acids. So the comodo is actually oily, fatty, contains keratinized cells, and, as well as bacteria, if this makes sense. And this cycle just keeps continuing on. And eventually the comodo will rupture, either because it is popped by, uh, by the individual or through self-rupture. This, uh, this, this may lead, this will lead to inflammation, which is the final stage of acne pathogenesis. The stage is often self-limiting, but the re, but the rupturing of the comodo can leave some scarring craters, depending on, I guess, uh, how big it is. When the comodo ruptures, it will spill out the sebum substance everywhere around here, which contains. Um, the keratin, the water, it contains lipids, free fatty acids, and the bacteria, uh, P. acnes. And this will trigger the inflammatory response. Um, I hope you enjoyed that video that, that on the acne pathophysiology. Uh, thank you for watching.